Okay. I'm ready. Let's roll. Okay. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to episode number seven zero, Joe. Seventy times now we've done this. Wow. Our parents would be proud. No. No, they're not really. Well, your parents would be. They watch the show. Oh, they got nothing better to do. They're retired. <laughs> my, my mom's <laughs> retired, has never seen the show. <laughs> <laughs> eh, she's better off. Uh, you have to excuse the uh, buckets of sweat pouring down my face. <laughs> Uh, Joe doesn't turn on the air conditioning unless we're actually in the building and we haven't been here in like a week, week and a half, so I'm not sure. What is it? It's 87 degrees outside here in our uh, part of the neck of the woods. It's probably... (laughs) 92 in here. 92, 95, somewhere there inside the studio here today, so... If Uh, you go back to the shitty part of the the building, it's (laughs) it's, uh, probably a a nice cool 78, though. Uh, apparently we've decided to stay where we are, so we'll uh, we'll do dad this uh, thing up here, and it'll actually look glorious here. We're gonna do dad, do dad it up, and it's gonna be glorious. It's gonna be glorious. <laughs> actually, I just hope he starts turning on the damn air conditioner. Uh, <laughs> Jake I'll, I'll Bowman, be, Bowman's happy. plumbing and heating is coming here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna see what we can do here. <laughs> All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, get ready to dive into the headlines here, assuming everything will load up properly today. <clears throat> We're going to start off, Joe, where a man has been sentenced for trying to seduce an undercover cop with some chicken Alfredo. Oh, good. <laughs> I like chicken Alfredo. Uh, out of Ashatubala County, a man who tried to seduce an underage victim with chicken Alfredo and a can of Sprite will serve seven days in the county jail. Uh, Alberto Maruna, age 23, was arrested in Austin Town in an Austin Town sexting, sexting uh, last December. He thought he was talking to a 15-year-old boy online, but was actually an undercover uh, Austin Town PD officer. Maruna arranged to meet the officer somewhere in Austin Town. He planned to bring lubricant, a can of Sprite, and some chicken Alfredo to the date. Uh, <laughs> He's a big spender. <laughs> he'll, be on, uh, he'll be on house arrest for 120 days and will have to register as a Tier 1 sex offender. I'll put his uh, mug up there for everybody to enjoy. It looks like he does enjoy some chicken it's Alfredo. Chicken Alfredo, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then some. <laughs> oh, Lord. It's still hot, just in case you're wondering if I'm not there. My eyeballs are sweating. A <laughs> uh, woman stabs her husband with a squirrel for not buying beer on Christmas Eve. I, I want to hear this story. <laughs> <laughs> this is a story I somehow missed back in December, but here, here we go. Uh, a South Carolina woman, Helen Ann Williams, was, arrest- was arrested on Christmas Day for stabbing her common-law husband with a ceramic squirrel the night before. His crime? Heading out to buy beer, finding the store closed, and thus returning home to his wife empty-handed. What a bastard. It was Christmas Eve, so... Yeah. Uh, his wife was apparently so incensed about her husband being beerless, she picked up a ceramic squirrel, uh, hit him over the head with it... Why the hell do you have a ceramic... Right, anyway. Hit him over the head with a ceramic squirrel, then stabbed him in the shoulder and chest. Uh, I'm going to put up her uh, lovely photo there. She looks like a pleasant woman. According to NBC, it was no joke. The police found the man covered in blood with cuts on his shoulder and face and a huge gash in his chest. Best part of it, Joe. uh, The the (laughs) The best part? Okay. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Such domestic squabbles apparently aren't anything new in South Carolina. The 34-year-old woman stabbed her fiancé on Christmas Day after they... What the hell was that that just curled across the floor? Apparently we need an exterminator, too. Oh. Just saying. I don't know what that was. I just caught a something, glimpse of something, uh, something looking for starting that way. <laughs> looking for something cooler. <laughs> uh, such uh, Anyway, uh, I, now I've lost my train of thought here. The 34-year-old woman stabbed her fiancé on Christmas Day after they argued over what, co- what color scheme to use at their upcoming wedding. Uh, there was also a horrible story from Florida, uh, the, the man who was shot and killed for texting during a movie. Uh, all of these things happened on Christmas Day or Christmas Eve last year. No, oh, Merry Christmas. <laughs> It's a season of love. Yeah, clearly. (laughs) I'm a little freaked out now. I don't know what that was. Uh, you did you ever play uh, the classic Nintendo games back in the '80s? You know, your Super Mario Brothers. The Nintendo came out after my thing. I'm I was an Atari guy. You're an Atari guy. Yeah, so I I'm just very old. Um, well, you know what? When I say Nintendo, you at least know know what what Super Mario Brothers. Yeah. Uh. Apparently, the, a vintage Super Mario Brothers video game, Joe, sold for $114,000 at a recent auction. Wow. This was in Dallas. 
An open, an open copy of a vintage Super Mario's Brother yeah, game. An open, an open container started yeah. this all right. <laughs> has been sold for 114 grand at an auction that underscore, underscored the enduring popularity of the entertainment system created decades ago. A bidder who wished to remain anonymous snapped up an early version of the pioneering Super Mario game released in 1985 for the Nintendo Entertainment System console during an auction uh, conducted Friday by Dallas-based Heritage Auctions. Um, I'm going to put up some pictures of those games. So there's... Uh, I played all. I loved the Nintendo. I also grew up with an Atari, but the Nintendo was where I really took off on video games. So these were all still in their original somehow container. You'll see the plastic packaging there and everything. Uh, the Super Mario Brother, Mike Tyson's Punch Out was a classic game, and Super Mario Brothers Three. Uh, they sold for a total of thirty-eight thousand four hundred dollars. <laughs> or I'm sorry, Super Mario Brothers sold for one hundred fourteen grand. Mike Tyson pun Mike Tyson's Punch Out sold for fifty thousand four hundred dollars. And Super Mario 3 sold for $38,400. Wow. When do, do those Atari games sell for anything? Cause my brother actually still has the system and uses it. Yeah, I'm not sure if uh, there's a call for those or not. I don't really play video games anymore. It's been several years since I was you know, really into doing much the, of anything. With the Atari, we played, but nobody was ever addicted to it like they are yeah. right now to stuff. Yeah, it's kind of scary the controls got on, on people now. Uh According to a New York Post article, couples should wear face masks now, Joe, while having sex. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, safe sex during the coronavirus pandemic may soon require protection beyond just the nether regions. A new study from researchers at Harvard University says that hooking up some carries some risk for transmitting COVID-19 from one partner to the other. And he recommends, among other practices, wearing a face mask while you're doing it. Uh, the research published in the Anals. <laughs> I'll tell you what, these doctors never get laid. Because <laughs> they wouldn't even be thinking about this. Uh, research published in the Annals of Internal Medicine. Uh, ranked, <laughs> ranked, <laughs> ranked, so we have internal anals. <laughs> it ranked, uh, and they ranked frisky uh, situations based on how likely it is to catch the coronavirus while in the act. Researchers rec recommend wearing a mask for the riskiest sexual scenario. Sex with people other than those with one who is with whom one is quarantined. So I guess for all you cheaters out there, better wear your mask. Right, right. Uh, if you have an out of house coronavirus crush, the study says besides keeping your mask on, you should avoid kissing, uh, avoid any oral to anal acts, and, <laughs> and if <laughs> I I have that as a, a general rule anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not gonna read anymore. This is pretty great. It gets kind of gross, but. I... <laughs> It's going through every kinky situation. <laughs> These are the things you shouldn't do. This, that, this is a stupid story. Who the hell thought of that? Uh, Harvard. 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 Oh, I was right then. None of them were getting laid. <laughs> <laughs> Man crashed a stolen car into a completely unrelated stolen car driven by a woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's too funny. Don't you hate it when you're in your stolen car and somebody drives their stolen vehicle right into yours? I it's so annoying. That. <laughs> It ruins everything. Uh, police in Yamal County, Oregon, said a chase resulted in them incidentally finding a completely unrelated suspect. It happened last Sunday. Newburgh Dundee cops responded to a report of a stolen Toyota Land Cruiser. According to their account, they found it driving through town, but the suspect, Portland man Randy Lee Cooper, age 27, fled through downtown Newburgh. Cooper crashed into an, into an occupied Buick Regal near, near East Franklin Street. Uh, now the defendant is charged with unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, attempting to elude police. Assault in the third degree, reckless driving, amongst other charges. But here's the thing. The Buick Regal had also been stolen, according to the police report. Did Cooper allegedly steal it? Nope. Did he have anything to do with it before allegedly crashing? No way. It was completely unrelated. Officer said that Regal had been sto the Regal had been stolen weeks earlier. I'm going to go ahead and put up the uh, Dynamic Duo's uh, pictures there for everybody to see. Officers took the suspect into custody from the Land Cruiser, but then learned the Buick Regal was also stolen from a completely unrelated crime that had been reported about three weeks earlier. In the Sunday crash, they found the driver, Krista Nicole B Butafuco, age 25, under the influence of intoxicants. She's now charged with driving under the influence and for unauthorized use of a motor vehicle. It's not clear if Cooper and uh, Butafuco have attorneys at this time or if they're scheduled to appear in court. Well, why wasn't she charged with theft? I don't know, man. I just read the stuff. I don't I, Okay, I'm just curious. I don't actually read any of this before we get started. <laughs> I just saw you skimming through. <laughs> uh, you big museum fan? I know how cultured you are. 
<laughs> that sounded really sarcastic. <laughs> have you been anywhere but the children's? Have you even been to the children's museum? I haven't been to the children's museum, but I love museums. I think museums are cool. He's never been to a museum. I have been to. <laughs> Peru has a great museum, the Miami County Museum. Uh, museums are battling over who has the best bum exhibit. Uh, best what? Butt exhibit. <laughs> you know, ass cheeks. I, I get it. I'm just a little confused. <laughs> well, let me clear it up for you. Anyone who's ever taken a stroll through any self-respecting museum, museum will know that there are typically a lot of butts on show. Okay, I guess I haven't been to the museum. <laughs> Big butts, barely there butts, perfectly sculpted butts. Museums really have it all. Uh, yeah, that's his type of, uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot. Sir Mix-a-Lot. Is that who sings that? Yeah. I yeah. like big butts. Uh, now as the world has come to a standstill, museums have decided to battle it out over who has the best butt exhibit. Uh, the Yorkshire Museum set up the battle between the curators on June 26, offering up their initial entry of a Roman marble statuette of an athlete who unfortunately has had a chunk of his knocked out, a uh, chunk knocked out of his butt. <laughs> well, I, I hope whoever did it had a mask on. <laughs> we'll put that picture up there for everybody to see uh, his... It looks like someone bit it off. Yeah. I wonder if they're wearing a mask on That's what I'm wondering. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's just not safe. Um, in an interview with Board Panda, Lee Clark, the York Museum's trust communications manager, said it wasn't long before other museums took up the challenge, and there's been entries from all over the world. There's been some fantastic suggestions of some great behinds, with some museums getting very creative. Uh, so without further ado, I'm going to put up some different uh, some butt pictures for you all to enjoy, just in case you're not as cultured as Joe. <laughs> Uh, we've got this disturbing image here. I'm not sure what, what that is. Uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, here's another one. Interesting camera angle there. And then these just appear to be some sketches. Uh, I'm not sure what's up with the loincloth looking things. That must be some uh, archaic stuff the, there. And what's going on there? Why is, is he like trying to give him an atomic wedgie? I'm not sure <laughs> no, what that's all about. It, it's a, it's a G-string loincloth. <laughs> this guy's funny. butt's getting a dusting or something there. That's a, or gal. <laughs> Maybe that's a gal. I don't know. Is that some grapes? Maybe. She's checking out her own ass there. Looks like. Oh. Is that, what's that going on there? Somebody hold, what's going on in the background there? What, look, look at that one. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, um, on that note, <laughs> on that note, if you're a big museum curator person, uh, are you into the butt wars? I don't know. I don't know anything. I'd, yeah, I don't think I've been to a museum I'm, that's not been. I'm the really museum. at a loss for this because <laughs> I, I don't know what they're doing. Uh, company, uh, you look, if you're ever looking for some part-time work, maybe uh, you're out of a job due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, company is looking to pay someone ten grand just to take a dump. I'll I'll poop for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> sure, it's an unusual unusual job, but somebody's got to do it. And if you like the sound of getting paid the uh, sound of getting paid thousands of bucks to literally sit on your butt, this news might just make your day. Hey, wait! Isn't that what Darren Sturch does? It is. Huh? You know, and she probably wears a mask for work, but I uh, I feel like she needs more of a muzzle. I, I don't know. <laughs> Something that locks. Yeah. I think Mr. Stewart would agree. I'm sure but Hayden not might. allowed. Yeah, Hayden might appreciate that. Yeah. Uh, sure, it's an unusual job, but somebody's got to do it. And if you like the sound of getting paid thousands of dollars to sit on your butt, this news might make your day. Yes, the VP for Fecal Matters, a genuine job title, will assist in Tushy for a three-month period, working partly uh, part-time for roughly 30 to 60 minutes a day. Well, that's a lot of pooping. Uh, I guess it depends on how often you poop, it says. Uh, the job description on Tushy's website reads... Yes, this is for real. Tushy is looking for our first VP of Fecal Matters to assist. <laughs> see what I did there? Yeah. In the day to... Uh, <laughs> that was rather clever. <laughs> to uh, poop orations of our uh, Bidet 2020 campaign. With guidance from our chief pooping officer, Dr. Mark Hyman. This has got to be a joke. Our new VP of Fecal Matters will be testing and studying their own pooping habits and documenting it via Tushy's web social media. You know, you know the government gave him some sort of grant for this. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, this will be a three-month fart time, $10,000 contract role requiring about 30 to 60 minutes per day, depending on how many times you poop, to poop and document your experience. The desired qualifications for the job uh, role, which, <laughs> which seems okay. to be based entirely around readily available puns, read, a real pooping human with 21 to 121 years of pooping experience, pungent poop-related communication skills, possess incredible precision spraying skills, what? strong poojack management, 
solid or loose knowledge base of Bristol stool chart. This is a joke. Ability to prioritize in complex, fast-paced, or constipated environments. Embraces an open-door policy when discussing what happens in the bathroom. And the ability to install the tushy bidet on a standard toilet. You'll be required to make a minimum 90-day commitment to the job role as you analyze your daily pooping habits, test tushy, tushy projects, products against other bathroom brands, and produce video content. What the hell? Wow. Uh, as a this sounds like somebody with, a, with an ass fetish that's just putting this up there. Uh, to, uh, so basically to apply for this unique position, you simply fill out an application form on the Tushy website. And submit a 60 to 90 second video of why you are the perfect pooper for the job. Good luck. Tushy. <laughs> website. I, uh, I was looking for some extra cash. <laughs> there you go. Let's go get you some Taco Bell or White Castle and you should be all set to poop for... <laughs> Ever. Forever. Drunken man forces his way behind an Akron subway counter and makes his own sandwich. Out of Akron, Ohio, a 44-year-old man ended up in jail after police said he forced his way behind the counter of a subway uh, before making his own sandwich. Don Peters was arrested without incident at the restaurant on the 1000 block of Kenmore Boulevard. He's, he, was, he was being held in the Summit County Jail on charges of disorderly conduct, criminal damaging, and an open container. According to police... <laughs> he brought his beer in. <laughs> you gotta wash the sandwich down with something. Uh, according to the police report, Peters was intoxicated when he went into the subway at about 12.45 p.m. on Saturday. Workers told officers that Peters was belligerent and demanded they make him a meal. He then began a damaging the plexiglass in the store, police say, before walking around the counter and making his own sandwich. Arresting officers said they found a bottle of vodka and a block of Subway cheese in his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> How do you get a bottle of vodka in his pocket? And maybe he had like the MC Hammer pants or... Well, like, um, he had half of it. He had cargo pants on or something. <laughs> um... Ooh, what happened there? Man left mortified after leaving poo stains on a woman's bed sheets. Mm. Damn, that would be embarrassing. <laughs> a man was left mortified after he discovering he left some transferred poo stains on a woman's bed sheets before desperately texting his buddies for help. Instead of providing said help, his uh, buddies instead posted the conversation to their Twitter accounts. <laughs> <laughs> that is all good friends do. After, of course, suggesting that he get the hell out of there and delete her off all of his social media. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I would have suggested washing them, but... <laughs> Kevin, age 26, from Dublin, Ireland, slept over at a girl's house overnight on Friday on the 3rd of July. But on Saturday morning, he realized he had left a disaster on her white sheets overnight. Kevin was horrified to find several poo stains on, on the bed. I'm going to put up a photo there. He must have. Um, he realized he needed to cover up the mess, which was incredibly obvious to the naked eye. In a moment of panic, Kevin texted his friend Levi for some much-needed help. Kevin claimed he went to the toilet but didn't wipe his butt properly. Apparently not. And desperately tried to cover the stains with his legs so the woman wouldn't notice. While she was out of the room, Kevin flipped the bed sheet so the poo stain was on the lady's side of the bed. Good for him. That was smart. <laughs> and spilt beer on the sheets. <laughs> uh, the woman didn't notice the stains while Kevin was still in the house however the pair have not spoken since the date of the incident uh, Kevin said I ate a burger and chips from Burger King and drank one uh, liter of Hennessy and Coke the night before and I ended up taking a shit Saturday morning when we went, to, when we went back to bed for a bit for watching the TV show Normal People I realized something was a little bit off I swapped the sheets around to her side of the bed and, and spilled beer stain and, and spilled some beer as well she did not notice the stains when I was still in the house, but we have not spoken since it happened last Saturday. I don't think things are looking too good, he said. <laughs> That's disgusting. It is disgusting. <laughs> we have a lot of, uh, the last couple of weeks, a lot of penises and butts and bodily fluid, and mm -hmm. we have a pretty raunchy show. Well, that's what we got for this week in news. Uh, you guys ready for this week in Florida? Oh, I love Florida. All right. Here we're, we've actually got a new opening for Florida that doesn't include us singing, so. Oh. Here we go. Down to Florida. We welcome you to the Sunshine State. They're kicking back and soaking up the rays every day in Florida. I'm in Florida The sun is setting over Tampa Bay It's like a Caribbean holiday Every day in Florida 
All right, everybody, welcome to This Week in Florida. We're going to start things off, Joe, out of our... We used to be here all the damn time. We've not had a good story there for a long time. We're back to St. Lucie. Oh, good. <sighs> out of St. Lucie County, a woman told St. Lucie County, County Sheriff's deputy she forgot a drug pipe that an x-ray apparently determined was in her anus. She forgot it? She forgot it. Is that just where she keeps it? I... That, More butt news. Uh, the case of the 34-year-old lady with, a, with an apparent crack pipe sequestered in her hindquarters... Happened on June 12th, just after 3 a.m. Investigators went to Orange Avenue and Rock Road off of Fort Pierce near the St. Lucie County Jail after a report of an impossible impaired driver. The woman was slouched over the steering wheel of her Toyota, her foot on the brake, and the vehicle in drive. One person said the vehicle was there for about 20 minutes. The woman, who was a Fort Pierce resident, said she was tired and hadn't been getting much sleep. After participating in field sobriety exercises, the woman was arrested on a DUI charge. Investigators found what they said were items consistent with smoking drugs inside of her vehicle. The woman was taken to jail where an x-ray showed a foreign object inside of her groin area. Is that a standard procedure? An x-ray? Not, not so here. So they must have suspected something. Well, uh, I bet it is there. <laughs> probably is there. <laughs> <laughs> probably got a federal grant for one of those. Uh, <laughs> Fort St. Lucie. <laughs> uh, strip shirts revealed a charred cylindrical object or pipe with a filter material inside of it. In learning a, What's in, the filter in for learning safety? Of the, <laughs> safety first. In learning of the pipe, a deputy was told it came from her anus in the strip search. Uh, it came from her anus is reminiscent of a popular movie title, uh, uh, such as It Came From Outer Space from 1953. It came from beneath the sea of 55. It came from another world in 2007, and it came from yesterday in 2011. An anus, the plural of which is anuses. It's not ani. All right. <laughs> Uh, the opening at the lower end of the alimentary canal through which the solid refuse of digestion is excreted, according Whoa. to dictionary.com. <laughs> Why are we doing this? <laughs> anyway, that lady had a crack pipe up her hoo off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> did she put it there when the police showed up, or did it just where she keeps it normally? <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if they got that far. Come on, come on everyone. Let's do some drugs. One second. <laughs> I got this. Does anybody want to use my pipe? <laughs> I got I got a buddy in, in Dublin that would really like that. <laughs> no, no, the Dublin guy was the one that got a battered. Oh no, yeah, he was he was that one. He was the poop stain, wasn't he? I was he? thinking that was the guy that got battered with a squirrel, but that was somewhere else. I think it was in Ohio. <laughs> well, Ohio has a lot of weird stories too. Maybe we need to come up with an Ohio segment. We've had some good stuff out of there. Too. Yeah. Uh, Florida man sings and reads to relax gators during the pandemic. Uh, he goes by the name Gator Crusader, and he's always had a passion for Florida's reptiles. Uh, Michael Wilmer is known as the Gator Crusader. He posts wild videos where he gets you, extremely you know, he's close. He's the only one that calls himself that, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he posts videos where he gets extremely close to alligators during live shows. He said he loves he's loved alligators since he was a kid, and he even told a school counselor in high school that he already knew he wanted to perform with gators as a teenager. Uh, he shared what he's been doing different, different, doing differently during the pandemic, and if he thinks alligators can sense the difference. Uh, Warmer performs with the Gator Show in Central Florida, and he shares videos of his wildest an antics online. He often dresses up, performs stunts, and even reads to the alligators show. Uh, there's a picture of him reading to an alligator with the mouth wide open right next to his mouth. That melon. just seems like a terrible idea. <laughs> next week, we're going to have a story about this same guy, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Florida man head bitten off by a <laughs> while reading a bedtime story. <laughs> it dies of coronavirus. <laughs> uh, crap. Oh, we're not supposed to talk about that, are we? <laughs> Gonna get Clinton, man. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, Sebastian man accused of pouring stink bait on clothes that belong to some juveniles. <laughs> A uh, man was arrested Thursday after he allegedly poured urine on clothes. <laughs> <laughs> mm, okay, let's try this again. A man was arrested. We can't do this now, can we? <laughs> Not when we're live. Uh, a man was arrested Thursday after he allegedly poured urine on clothes belonging to juveniles who were swimming at the watering hole near Stone Crop Street in Sebastian. Uh, the juveniles contacted the Sebastian Police Department, said the man poured something on their items, and then walked across the street to his residence. When questioned, the man told the youth he didn't do anything before walking away. Upon checking their clothing, the juvenile smelled a strong odor similar to urine. Officers conducted a check of the area where the youth's property was and detected a very strong, pungent odor similar to urine. 
Police met with 68-year-old Thomas Michael Hotchkiss, who lives across the street from the swimming hole. Uh, we'll put up Mr. Hotchkiss's, uh, yeah, he's not wearing his mask during his bookend photo. I wonder if that's okay. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's why most people wear them in the stores anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I always see him like this. <laughs> It's like, I'm not sure what you're doing over there. You know, we should get some custom Doe and 5 mask made. With your design you were, ta- you were talking about this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'd be great. If there's any interest with some Doe and 5 COVID masks, let us know. We'll, we'll, we'll set up a GoFundMe or something and make it happen. Yep, we can do that. Uh, Hotchkiss told police he was tired of the juveniles yelling at him and trespassing on, trespassing? Trespassing on his property near the uh, swimming hole. The defendant had ordered some stink bait, animal deterrent chemical. The defendant mixed the chemical with water and poured it on the ground right next to the property as the youth, or the youth were as a deterrent. The juveniles and their parents pursued charges regarding the incident. Hotchkiss was charged with two counts of criminal mischief and was taken, in, taken into custody. He is transported to the Indian River Jail for processing. According to jail records, Hotchkiss was also arrested for criminal mischief back in January of 2020. Uh, didn't say what the charges or why or why he was charged on that one. I wonder what those kids did, maybe. They should have gotten that. <laughs> Maybe they were a-holes. Yeah. Uh, well, that's all we got. We have kind of a short week in Florida. We're time to uh, go ahead and segue into uh, this week. And good news, we got an opening oh, okay. for this too. <laughs> okay. I, I was what are scared. you cringing for? I, you know I'm scared. <laughs> all right, here we go. This week in good news. All right, everybody, welcome to This Week in Good News. We're going to start off right here in our backyard in Carmel, Indiana, Joe. It's not really our backyard, but it's you know, still yeah. the same state. Yeah. Uh, back on July 8th, Officer Morris and Officer Navarrete had the privilege of meeting an 18-year-old Carmel resident, Riley Adson. Uh, they initially saw him walking along East Main Street near Hazel Dale Parkway. He was presenting an American flag high in the air and waving to cars and people as he walked by. Uh, go ahead and put up the young man's uh, picture there. Uh, he was still... Uh, I'm sorry, about an hour later, the officer officer saw him again walking near police headquarters, which is uh, at least three miles from where they initially saw him. He was still holding the American flag high, assuming he had been on foot the entire time. The officers took the opportunity to speak with him. He then told him he was completing a 15-mile hike through Carmel while while presenting the American flag as a way to show support for our country and its police officers. Well, good for him. So we're starting to see now, um, and and we're not going to divulge into the political i don't want you to get all <laughs> all freaked out on me no, no but we're I, starting to see a, a kind of a sway in the pendulum as far as uh people su- making public shows of support for the police right thing, right i think the, Even the silent majority is starting to, to kind be, of wake to up be, a little to bit to be not le- not so silent anymore right, right. They're, they're getting tired of the bs so uh it's very cool to, to see this stuff uh we just well we did not in our community but just in one county over they had a uh, support the police rally or whatever you want to call it uh, looked like it was pretty pretty big yeah. in, in nature and it went it went well so uh, as a law enforcement officer I appreciate it when I see things like that I appreciate it when people come up to me and, and say they appreciate what we do and, and they, that they pray happens for us fairly and, often doesn't uh, it yeah I mean just on Monday we uh, Sarah came into town and we took our youngest daughter out for, for lunch I had to work and uh, uh, a nice lady came up and shook my hand and said she appreciates what we do and prays for us and our families uh, so they understand the toll it can take on the families of the, the officers. and uh, Without our knowledge, that her and her family had actually even paid for our meal, and her husband's in the military as well. So oh. Obviously, I appreciate what he does. Actually, I, so. I shared that story, and I had a huge response, and I can't believe how many people went out on there and were saying that they, they pray for you guys and yeah. appreciate you guys so much. This community is pretty supportive. Yeah. So uh, just know that we do appreciate it. Don't don't hesitate to reach out to us, and you know, especially during these times, our 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 community where I serve is uh, hands over fist, uh, overwhelmingly supportive of our department for the most part. I mean, obviously you're gonna have your detractors no matter where you're at, but right. uh, this community as a whole has been very supportive, and we uh, we definitely appreciate it on our end. So uh, go ahead, moving on to our last good uh, good news story today, Joe, where a former trash removal service worker gets accepted to Harvard Law School. 
uh, out of oh, wow. yeah, his original plan was to become a professional boxer. Wait, Harvard, isn't that where all the guys are that aren't getting laid? Yeah, well, you know, I mean, he may be studying some weird stuff, but still a re- reputable school, right? Or it was. I, I, I uh, anyway, his words, but they're the ones that said to wear your mask while you're <laughs> licking <having>. butts. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because you never know when you're going to find a crack pipe. <laughs> uh, hey, his original plan was to become a professional boxer. That all came crashing down after an injury he turned his dreams into another reality. <laughs> he came crashing down once he got punched in the face. It's like, this is a bad idea. <laughs> Uh, after a few obstacles, 24-year-old Bowie native Rahan Stanton woo, is calling Harvard Law School his new home, according to his post on social media. Stanton showed his excitement over the acceptance into Harvard in a reveal video on YouTube, but it's important to know his journey to understand why the moment was so meaningful to him in, to begin with. Um, I grew up in a pretty great household, he said. Initially, very privileged middle-class family in a private school up until the age of eight. That's when Stanton said his mother left the home and his family behind. Which is a, it was a very traumatizing experience for us all, he said. Their stable household was shattered, and his family struggled paying the bills, and Stanton's dad was forced to raise two boys on his own. Uh, there were times where we didn't have food. There were times when the electricity was turned off, and I remember our HVAC system broke. And I remember going to school in the wintertime. I wonder like, how that felt when the yeah. HVAC system broke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I remember uh, going to school in the winter, and I was super like it was hard because I would have a jacket on and it was cold. Uh, then I went to school and it didn't, I didn't perform well in school because I'm mad at the world. I'm sad. I feel, I'm feeling sorry for myself. And uh, he, he was mad that people just don't believe that he was a victim. Uh, the Prince Ca- George County's native made it through high school, but his grades and test scores were not good enough to get him into college. So I opted to work for a trash company, a sanitation company. However, that's when things really changed for, uh, for me. And for the first time in my life, people who just want to embrace me for being a young black man really uplifted me. They said, oh, wow, you shouldn't be here. You're too young. This is, always, this is always going to be here. Go and do something with your life, they would tell him. His brother made a decision that would change the trajectory of his life. He dropped out of school, uh, he dropped out of school uh, so I could go, go ahead and go on to school, he said. He started off at Bowie State University in 2014, and two years later he transferred to the University of Maryland, earning a history degree with a 3.84 GPA. That's pretty good for a really subpar good. high school student. Uh... Uh, the news uh, station reporting on this first learned about him back in 2018 as the Maryland students commence, uh, as, uh, as they were the UMD student uh, commencement speaker. They talked about how after graduation from high school, he got a job at a trucking company hauling garbage and painting dumpsters. With the support and encouragement from his coworkers, he was able to pursue his college degree. If it wasn't for them, I wouldn't have gone to college at all, he said back in 2018. Staten said he struggled in school and even had a teacher tell him he needed to be in special education classes. He said after high school, he received a ton of rejection letters from every college he applied to, and he chose to be a sanitation worker to help a single dad out, who worked tirelessly, tirelessly, tirelessly to put food on the table for his family. He said he would wake up at 4 a.m. every day to go to work, head to class, and then return to work to finish a shift. Thinking back at all the people that has helped me, failure just wasn't an option for me. I never quit. I just kept going. Now, years later, he's taking a story of triumph to one of the top law schools in the country. I'm going to go ahead and put up his picture for everybody to see kind of his transition there. You can see him with the sanitation truck and his acceptance letter to, uh, letter to Harvard. Uh, that is so cool. I can't believe he got into Harvard. That's he, not, You know, you don't see, not, you don't hear of it, and, and I know it happens all the time, but you don't hear a lot of the the mom leaving and the, and the dad doing the, the dirty work. It's usually the dad's leaving and the mom's doing the dirty work. So uh, it's kind of cool to me that this, this young man had um, – you know, he maybe he decided school wasn't for him, or even if he was kind of on the fence, it sounded like about it there. He still felt the need to go do some blue collar, dirty work to help his dad make ends meet because mm-hmm. dad took care of him right. all those years. So um, it's pretty cool that he was there taking care of his parents as best as he can, and now he's uh, looks like he's going to do well for himself in life and be an attorney. I don't know what kind of attorney he's wanting to be, but uh, one of the uh, basically anyway, one of the one of this kid's mentors created a GoFundMe fundraiser to cover some of his uh, schooling uh, offense, uh, expenses, and it's already exceeded its goal, Joe, of $75,000. So. Oh. Things are turning around for him, it sounds like, that finally. That sounds so. great. It's pretty cool for him. So. That's something I'd even want to donate to. I think that's super. Um, that's what we got for the good news this week. Uh, Joe and I, uh, gosh, are months sweating. ago. Yeah, it is hotter than hell in here. Uh, several months ago, uh, I put in a one of our Christmas time shows. 
in a contest. Uh, there's a indie popcon. It's in Indianapolis. They have a big podcasting. It's I think it's a convention and an award show. Maybe at the end of the week every year. I I wasn't aware of it because you know we're still fairly new to the podcast world. Um, and uh, I was asked to put this this entry in. Pick one of your better shows. I didn't, even know, we, <laughs> didn't even know we had one. <laughs> Uh, Joe and I felt actually pretty good after one of our Christmas shows we did. It may have been the Christmas show for last year. I can't remember for sure, but uh, I, I I put the entry in as was requested and completely forgot all about it. Didn't even think anything about it. Uh, they didn't have the actual physical uh, event because of the COVID restrictions and everything in place. So I guess they did everything virtually. I didn't even know anything about that. And then uh, I got the I got the word that we actually had finished second place. <laughs> second place. That's crazy. Um, and the comedy category for the podcast awards this Here, year. Here, I so. thought this was a serious podcast. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, maybe we weren't doing the political garbage that then. I, I don't. I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think they'd have banned us then. But um, how many people were in it? Do you know of how many? I, don't I mean, know. was there just two of us? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> finished second of two. <laughs> Not bad. You can say last, um, but that's so pessimistic. But it, it's pretty cool to me. I mean, you, I don't know if you looked at that list, but you could see that there was a ton of categories and there was multiple participants in each one. Mm-hmm. Uh, some just had a couple, you know, maybe one or two finishes. Some had a tie for second place, whatever. Uh, I was ret- I was told that we actually finished second place in voting, which was pretty cool. So Yeah, and they um, had some constructive criticism. Yeah, constructive uh, They told me to shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, <talks> to <laughs> Joe, Joe needs to stop talking. <laughs> That show would have won first place if I'd have just had, actually they requested I got out of the picture too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it wasn't the video part. It was just that this is strictly podcast awards. So uh, appreciate uh, those of you that do tune in. Tune in, uh, no, no matter if it's on Facebook, YouTube, if you just physically listen to the show on your favorite podcasting app, um, you can find it on any of the podcasting apps. Uh, so you know whether it's Apple or Google or you use Spotify, whatever it is, tune in. Uh, you should be able to type in mornings in the kitchen with the dough and five oh and listen to it if you prefer not to look at our ugly faces. We don't blame you at all. We're so, pretty ugly. Um, we just do the video stuff basically just so you can kind of see the pictures that go with the stories or videos. Sometimes there's videos that go with them. So, uh, you know, we we appreciate everybody that, that tunes in. We appreciate it when you send us the funny stories you want to see us talk about or hear us talk about. So uh, keep them coming. We appreciate it. And uh, we will see you guys next week. Are we doing next week? Yeah. Well, the air conditioner fixed by that. Hopefully. <laughs> and that, find that mouse that was in here and freaked you out. Might have been a tarantula. That's what kind of scared me. <laughs> Fast little fat guy. Fat guy. All right. <laughs> well, we'll see you guys later.